All right, so what we're working on today, we got our 88 Trooper with the, um, it's got a 2.6 with a 2.3 intake and carburetor, or not carburetor, distributor. And the distributor right here is leaking oil internally, so not the O-ring on the outside, but rather the oil seal inside the distributor is leaking. I had this apart maybe a month ago, uh, so I could measure for a seal and see if it needed a repair sleeve, which it did. Put it back together, ordered my parts. Parts are here, and now I've got time to do it. So, um, from my understanding, there's a handful of different Isuzu distributors, even for the 2.3 and the 2.6. Um, so, uh, seal dimensions, as well as uh, repair sleeve dimensions, might be different for yours. Once I get this out of here, we'll get the part number off the distributor and I'll let you know what it is. Uh, best thing I can say if you're needing to do this is put aside an hour. It's about all it took me. Pull the distributor out, take it right apart. It's not that hard. Um, measure your seal, take a look at the shaft, see if you need a repair sleeve or not. Then put it back together, retime it, order your stuff, and then when your stuff gets here, uh, take it all apart again. So. What we're going to start with is we're going to pop this cap off. Pop this cap off. Pop the cap off somehow. The last clip's a bitch. Come on. Come on. Let go. There we go. Pop the cap off. And now I can see the rotor's pointed over there. We are pointed at kind of between three and four. So I want to point her down to number one, which is going to be about the five o'clock position, roughly. So I'll put it in neutral, and I will turn it over by hand. Maybe not. Alright, so I'll zoom you in a little bit here. So I just kind of put it in gear and rocked it back and forth until we're roughly where number one is. Um, I am going to retime the engine so I'm not super worried about it. I just don't want to get it 180 out, right? So you can see the little tooth on the reluctor wheel here is pointed roughly in line with this uh, little tab here. And the rotor is pointed roughly at 5 o'clock position which lines up with number one on the cap. So now, we're gonna take our 12 millimeter wrench and we're gonna remove the hold down nut. It's okay, I brought two. And you're gonna to wanna to take that right out. And then there's going to be a connector Sorry, two connectors One right down here And another one in the bottom of the cord Oh, sorry, bumping your camera Okay, so there's our electrical connection, and then there's your vacuum line. And you should be able to, if you're not looking at my arm, just 
slide it right out. Now your stupid little clips from hell are going to grab your firewall insulation and get stuck, apparently. Oh my gosh. Get out of there. Okay, make sure your uh, cap hold down clips aren't going to eat the firewall. And she comes right out of there. Okay, so there is the part number of the distributor I'm working on D4R8429. And there's a 7105. 89413 um, From what I've read on the forums, there's a couple of different uh, seal sizes inside. This one is 17 millimeter shaft diameter and I believe 30 millimeters outside diameter. So, anyway, let's just start uh, pulling it apart here. Let's wiggle our rotor off here. Then our reluctor wheel should pry off like so. And I'll show you this uh, once we get it off. It is moving, I promise. There we go. So this, if I can find the camera here. So you got a little tiny roll pin in there. That's what helps key it onto the distributor shaft and it helps kind of keep like a spring-loaded tension on it. So you don't drive it out. Uh, I thought you had to drive it out and there's nowhere for it to go. So you just pry it up. It's just a little bit of spring tension basically. Um, now let's see if I can remember Okay, I'm going to need a Phillips screwdriver. Well, technically JIS, but I don't have that. So, Phillips. Alright, so now what you're going to have to do, let me look and remember here. So I did not, when I took it apart last time, I didn't remove the vacuum canister. I remember that much. I did, I believe, pry it up and off its pin though. And there's probably a much nicer way to do this. But. Like that. And then, first time I took it apart, I did undid everything, but I don't believe you need to remove this piece or the sensor. I think you just need to undo the whole backing plate and lift it off. Now, let's see if I can find it here. Right there. You see that right underneath the wiring harness on the inside there? There is a little tiny timing mark in there. Now obviously any small differences in timing you can make up for with the adjustment on your timing light, but just try to make note of where that is and get it as close as you can uh, lined up original when you put it back together. You guys could see what I'm doing, couldn't it? Okay, 
Come on out of there. You can do it. My magnetic screwdriver is grabbing everything but what I want it to. Oh, close enough. Now I think the sensor plate should pull right out. Which it almost does. We just gotta remove this wiring harness clamp here. Okay. Excuse me while I lean on the panic button on my key fob and set my truck alarm off. Okay, so. The sensor plate comes off. You don't have to take the sensor off or anything. Uh, this is kind of your rotation for your vacuum advance right here. We're just going to set that aside. We don't have to do anything with that. Now we have to remove the mechanical advance. So there's a little rubber plug. Uh, in the end of the distributor shaft. Just pull that out. And there is a Phillips, or rather a JIS screw inside of that. And you're going to want to have to hold the shaft while you undo that screw. And then the top part of your mechanical advance comes out. There's that. There is like a little uh, thrust washer or shim or something goes underneath that, then I'll have to pull off the shaft here. So I think what I did to get the bottom part out was remove the gear and pull the shaft out of the distributor. So that's what we'll do. Now, this gear only goes on one way. The hole isn't drilled through straight or center or whatever. So you could put it on the wrong way, but your uh, roll pin won't go all the way through. So not to worry there. Let's take our little pin punch and a hammer. Okay, so once I got it started, I just grabbed it with some side cutters and pulled the pin out. Now our gear should slide off. Keyword on should. There's our gear. There is a thrust washer on top of the gear. Don't lose it. And, okay, yeah, so it looks like our distributor shaft comes right out. Okay, so, your mechanical advance weights stay on the distributor shaft. Now, this is why I'd need a repair sleeve right here. See that little groove that the seal has worn into the shaft? Uh... You know, I can just barely catch it with my fingernail. Uh, I'm in here. I don't want to be in here all that often, so I'm going to put a repair sleeve in it while I have it apart. So that's kind of... And then there is the seal that we need to do. Uh, like I said, this one's 17 inside by 30 outside. I've heard there are some that are like 15 by 22 or 17 by 22. So the best thing I can say is take yours apart measure it, put it back together, order your stuff, and then rebuild it once you have all the right parts. 
All right, so I've got the seal pried out here, and uh, I know you can't feel things through the camera. Well, could you imagine if you could? I'd never leave my room. Uh, it is rock hard, so it is not sealing. So I have my parts over here. I shoved the seal in the box with the repair sleeve because I like things in one place. You can see we got the right size. It's a like a snow midge taller than the original, but that's fine. Now there is an NOK number on the original seal. I googled that. I googled several combinations of it. I could not find a replacement. So I had to go off dimensions, which again is 30 by 17 by about 7 or 8 millimeters tall. And if you're well oiled, you should be able to push that seal in uh, with a firm thumb. Uh, it shouldn't fall in, but um, well lubricated, it should slide in fairly easily. Now, the uh, a little bit more interesting part is uh, getting our repair sleeve on the distributor shaft. Now, obviously, the sleeve has to go here. Now, by the way, this is an SKF 99068. It is ever so slightly taller than what it needs to be, but you can um, very lightly trim it down. So, again, it's for 17 millimeter shaft. It's about 10 millimeters tall. You only need it to be seven or eight millimeters tall, but this is the closest thing I could find. And what makes this tricky is, you know, you gotta put that all the way down here, but your installer, that comes with your speedy sleeve is only that long, so I think I can get away with a deep socket, maybe? I'm going to go have a look in the garage and see what I can come up with. Alright, so I'm just using a couple of uh, three-quarter drive sockets, and you should really do this in a vise. So I am just going to be very careful. Sketchy. Would that be better? Almost there. Go on just a little bit deeper. hot out here. I don't do well in the heat. So now we got her all the way on there. You have to break this little flange off once you've installed it. Now there is like a line prescribed in there so it usually comes pretty easy. Uh, you just kind of tap it with a, a chisel lightly or you, sometimes you can grab it with some side cutters and it usually comes right off. This stuff's pretty thin. Uh, really great thing that somebody's come up with here. <laughs> I love speedy sleeves. I don't know why. Let's see if I can get that to break off. Uh, 
it's starting to rip. Alright, so we got it to start breaking all the way. It's just a matter of now grabbing it and ripping it off. So that might get ugly, so I'm going to do that off camera. Alright, so that actually wound up being the perfect size uh, once I got it off there. So that was, again, SKF99068 or DMR sleeve 99068. It's part number and the dimensions right there. Uh, I got my seal from bearingscanada.com and I got that from Prairie Bearing and Bolt, uh, both Canadian companies. Uh, no affiliation, it's just that's where I got them from. I'm in Canada. I like ordering from Canada because it usually shows up faster and slightly cheaper. So going to go get a little dab of oil so I can lubricate my sealing surface and we'll slide that in. Okay. Now this would also be a very good time uh, to check and make sure your mechanical advance weights are freely moving. And everything kind of moves freely. So I suppose you don't really have to take this this part off. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, so. And since I'm here, I'll just screw it back on. And put the rubber plug back in. And then... Start sliding everything back together. Gear with the thrust washer. I said the gear only lines up one way with your hole for the roll pin. I've gotten it right the first time here. Slide her back in. Now, you probably couldn't, shouldn't go in with just the hammer, because you really don't want to hit the gear. I mean, I guess you could hit the shaft a little bit, but you really don't want to screw anything up there. So now with that back together, go back to the big end. You gotta kind of finagle this in around the arm for the vacuum canister. Uh, where is that? Right there. You can kind of finagle it down past. There we go. We'll eyeball and line up our timing marks again. Uh, let's see. You can see it right there. 
It has a bit of a better shot than before. So we'll put our screws back in now. Is my screwdriver still magnetic? It is. But not the way I want it to be. Our screws started. I'll double check that timing mark once more. And then we'll uh, do the final torque on our screws here. Here goes my screwdriver. Timing marks lined up again. Torque her down. That will slide our wire harness back in the distributor body like that under the vacuum can and your wire harness retainer oh, where am I? right there goes on like that and then your reluctor wheel, don't forget this, can go on like that, just pushes on, and then your rotor. Okay, so there you go, she's ready to get reinstalled. Now I'm not going to show that uh, because it was simply um, reverse of removing it. And then time your engine. I'm assuming if you have gotten this far, you know how to time your engine. Uh, if not, there are lots of videos on it. Because, uh, you know, everybody's got their different preference uh, for what they want their timing set. On this rig, I usually run about... 10, 12 degrees uh, static timing. Um, seems pretty happy there. I've got a cam and I've got a, the aftermarket carb and whatnot on there. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Alright, so I went to install it and I realized I didn't actually hook the vacuum advance back up. So, just want to say that. Yes, I did that, and it is hooked up now.